Hey guys, hope you're all doing really well. Um, so I'm going to give this a try today. I've never done like a whip and chat or anything like that. So I thought I would, I had some time here. I'm actually off work today. Um, no plans. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time and um, work on my diamond painting and um, maybe do one of some get to know you questions while I'm working on it. I, um, <laughs> I always like, like giving a little bit of information about myself, but I never know what to talk about. So I went online and I found some get to know you questions. These, these are, um, 50 questions nobody thinks to ask. So anyway, I thought I would kind of chat through some of these while I'm diamond painting. So first of all, what I'm working on is, there's a funny story behind this picture. So um, I was bragging about my diamond paintings at work. I'm a nurse. I work in long-term, in geriatrics, basically. Um, so keeping care of people that are over the age of 60 that um, need some extra help, but... Um, you know, might not necessarily need long-term care, just needing some short-term support. They, that's the kind of work I do. Um, so anyway, we were sitting around chatting about our crafts. You know, one of the ladies is a crochets and um, I told the girls that I like diamond painting. So they were asking about what this was. So um, I was telling them about it and, uh, sorry, my lab is outside. See, my cat is barking. He's been cooped up because it's been so cold out. So. Anyway, the girls were all like, oh, well, we want to see this. So I showed them a bunch of pictures and a couple of the girls said they wanted to give it a try. So anyway, me being me, jumped on board and, to help them and um, ordered um, two of my coworkers th this picture. Actually, it's called um, Sunset Elephant, I believe, from Home Fun Official Store. Anyway, my one co-worker had this plan. She went out and bought a desk. She bought lights. She was going to be a diamond painter. She got a spot done like this big and said, I can't do this damn thing. I can't see well enough. And she brought it back to me and said, do it for me. And I'm going to frame it and give it to my daughter. So anyway, I've been working on it for her. She's actually away on a trip right now. So my goal is to get this done for her for when I go back to work next week. So um, but in typical home fun style, it's confetti hell. So um, it's taking me a little bit longer than I had originally anticipated. So anyway, so a little bit about me. So uh, my name is Colleen and um, I live in Canada. Um, and I, like I said, I'm an LPN. I work in geri it's, uh, like, um, a geriatric unit. Um, I can't give too much information about that just due to confidentiality, but... Um, basically the people that I care for are uh, medically stable but socially are unable to go home for whatever reason so you know they may have incurred a fall or um, had a decrease in their mobility or the increase in confusion and all of a sudden they, they find themselves needing support so my line of work is partially nursing and a lot of social work like um, working with families to figure out what their needs are assessing our clients to try to figure out how we can best support them so um yeah my job is um it's really rewarding but it's also very high stress because we are we're making decisions that can affect somebody's life so um you know you're always always assessing always kind of got your your ears perked for things that family is might be saying or you know triggers that you're hearing that kind of thing so anyway I've got 10 days off and I'm just kind of soaking it in uh, getting some cleaning done around the house um, working on my diamond painting um, I'm actually going to be doing working on another hobby this afternoon I also paint reborn dolls so just kind of trying to recharge a little bit before I go back to work next week so anyway um so yeah that's just kind of a little bit about me i have a 12 year old son uh who i adopted um i'm a single mom to him and he is absolutely amazing um couldn't ask for a better kid he does have um adhd so sometimes he can be a bit of a challenge but you know you work through it you do what you need to do to get through it and um you know overall he's a great kid so being a single mom though and working long hours I often rely on child care providers and stuff so I'm very lucky that we have a great support system here at home um a lot of you know making sure that you've got good work-life balance when you lead um a busy life like that so 
Anyway, and then we also have two big dogs. We have a yellow lab, his name's Onyx, and then we have a little golden retriever, who I call my princess, but her name is Amber. And then we have two Manx cats, which you probably often see in my videos, um, crawling around. They're very friendly, very curious. Um, again, I said one time I'll have to tell you the story about how Nala got his name, but um, yeah, we'll do that maybe another time. So, just lost a diamond there. There it is. I find sometimes these ones here, they pop up and then you gotta um, get them down in the right spot again. Okay, so let's see, what kind of questions do I have? Um, so the first question on my list here is, are you named after anybody? And yes, I am actually. So I am named after a couple people. So my first name is Colleen. And my So my dad's family is English and um, they have this thing where they name their kids two names and then Called them by their middle name. So my dad's name was Colin, is Colin Charles, and um, he goes by Chuck. But um, so I was given the name Colleen after my dad. And it's actually funny because being an English family, uh, his nana used to, well, his name is Colin. And so my nana always used to call me Colleen. And uh, it's kind of neat because she's been gone for a while. I really miss her. But um, every once in a while I'll have a resident at work call me Colleen and it just brings back memories. Anyway, my middle name, Jean, is after my aunt. She was is my godmother and her name is Jeannie. Everybody, well, that's what they call her, but in French it's Jeanne. So I got my name after her, so Colleen Jean. Um, yeah, and then that's kind of the story of my name. So, um... Yeah, do I have any kids? Like I said, I have my one son. His name's Marcus. Um, he is 12 years old. Um, I actually adopted him. So he came to live with me as a foster placement when he was, oh goodness, 13 days old. And then um, I was given the, the joy of the ability to adopt him when he was two. The adoption was finalized. Do I want more kids? Yeah, I do. Um, Probably it would be through adoption. Um, I'm just kind of trying to get myself a little bit more financially stable, work through a few things, you know, getting some rentals done around the house. And then I'll pr probably pursue that. I don't see myself adopting, like, a, a baby probably would be an older child. But we'll see, you know, where life goes. And I think I needed this color. I saw a few of them. But there we go. These diamond paintings just tend to be very very confetti heavy which is uh, a lot to to take in when you're trying to do too many things at once um do i use sarcasm a lot yeah i would say i do um depending on who i'm with i think you have to be kind of careful with sarcasm because you know some people take things too literally i guess so um like, if it's somebody that I know I can trust, I definitely do. Um, I like using sarcasm at work with my some of my residents that are, you know, a little bit more cognitive that they understand it. So, um, oh, some of the things that you hear when you're working with people with dementia. Like, I was sitting on a stool one day, and uh, one of my residents, the stool had wheels on it, and he thought I was roller skating. So I went with it and I was like, yeah, I've got my professional roller skaters certificate here and I've got my my roller skates on and and yeah, we went with it for like, you know, <laughs> probably half an hour and I had all the staff laughing and stuff. You, When you work in a high stress job, you have to kind of be silly and take things lightly and sarcasm is definitely a great tool with that. So, But you do have to be careful because, you know, you can like easily offend people, I guess, so... Um, what is the first thing I notice about people? Um, I think for me, probably like body language is really huge. I think I spend a lot of time reading people's body language. Um, you know, some people are more open. Some people, you know, turn their body towards you. Some will be more close and turn away from you. Um, again, you know, being a nurse, you really kind of learn to read people and that's kind of, I think, the first hint we get to pe about people's personalities is um, the body language that they use and, you know, how they're feeling and 
what their overall mood is. You can tell a lot about a person from their body language, you know, whether they're a trusting person or whether they, I don't know, you know, are in pain or, yeah, I don't know. I would say that would be the first thing I noticed about the person. Um, favorite smells. Oh gosh, you guys. Okay, this is crazy, but I love Disney. Um, Disneyland is, if I could move to Disneyland tomorrow, I would. Um, I just love it there. I love the magic. Um, I love, I love the environment. I love how you can enter into that place and just feel like you've, you've entered a different world and you're actually in downtown California. Um, gosh, yeah, that's, I just can't even explain how much I love it, but Disneyland has a really like unique smell and every once in a while, I don't know what it is, but like you'll be walking down the street or, you know, down in a grocery store or something and you catch that smell that just reminds me of Disneyland and it's like kind of a sweet cinnamony smell and it just oh it just makes me want to go back so um gosh yeah that would probably that sounds crazy but that's my favorite smell is is Disneyland and I can't even tell you what it smells like because it just smells like Disneyland but um to me it just it brings back that magic when when you catch a whiff of that I said I want an air freshener in a Disneyland scent. Um, day to day smells. I love apple cinnamon. Um, that's probably like what I put in my, um, like my air fresheners the most and stuff. I think it just. Sorry guys, I ran out of room on my camera. So anyway, yeah, so that would be my favorite kind of day to day smell. Um, those are really like essential oils. Just any essential oils are nice. So, um, what is the furthest I've ever been from home is probably Disneyland. Yeah, so what we did a few years ago, it was really fun. I have a friend who owns a tour bus company. Um, well, shout out to Barrett Tours. Uh, Sean is absolutely amazing. Him and his wife actually specialize in Disney vacations. So he does, he runs a business and he runs bus tours um, from, from here in Canada to California. Um, it was awesome. It was absolutely amazing. Best time of my life. Um, I really want to go again. Um, we're actually taking a trip with him to Wisconsin Dells this year, which I'm going to definitely be vlogging and cannot look, cannot wait for that one because his tours are just so, so good. Um, so if you are in like central Canada and you're looking for a great tour company, what I love about his tours is they're family friendly. Like he plans, you know, for kids, like we watch family movies on the way down. There's frequent stops. He finds parks for the kids to hang out in so they can run off some steam. But yeah, so we actually took a 10 day trip on the bus to, to California. So um, the first day we drove through Montana, Utah, Idaho, um, or Idaho and then Utah and actually what happened was our bus broke down in Utah um, and we kind of spent half a day sitting at the side of a mountain which was really stressful and kind of sucked but overall you know what the whole experience was completely worth it and I would do it again in a heartbeat um, we got to see Disney Rack, um, we went to Legoland, um, SeaWorld, Newport Beach absolutely amazing um we are planning i'm hoping to take a trip to florida next year just depending on finances and stuff and just kind of see how that how that plays out but i want to go to disney world um also hoping to maybe fit in a cruise to the bahamas when we go down there but again you know everything costs money so um hopefully i'm really hoping to be able to do to do it i'm saving and i uh, hope so great hopes that that'll happen and I guess that would be the furthest of I've been but for now California um let's see um what was my my worst subject in high school math I sucked I could not figure that subject out for the life of me I'm pretty sure I got a mercy pass because like I got 50, like literally a 50% on my grade 12 algebra. Um, when I went back to school for my nursing, I actually had to upgrade it and I was completely paranoid about it because I couldn't, I just couldn't understand algebra. Like 
it makes it's way too abstract for me. I just couldn't like seem to figure out what I was doing. So anyway, what I actually ended up doing was taking a general math class and I got like an 86 in it. And I think it was just simply because it was, um, it wasn't as abstract. Like it was, I was, it was more tangible to me, I guess. Um, so yeah, anyway, math kind of sucks. Um, English, I did really well in high school, but then when, um, university came around, yeah, not so much, but, um, I think I didn't realize that I actually had to work in university to get the marks. So, um, yeah, that university English was probably my hardest in high school. Math was definitely my hardest. Um, let's see. Favorite quotes. Um, one of the things that I always tell people at work, my friends, and it's kind of something that I've learned to live by is um, you can't pour from an empty cup. Um, so I'm going to explain this. So the idea behind this is that we can't help other people unless we've taken care of ourselves. And a lot of people, like especially in the line of work I'm in, I find that I'm dealing with a lot of people who are just burnt out, that they have given so much of themselves that they have nothing for themselves and they have nothing for the people that they're caring for. Um, so what ends up happening is they're not doing any good for themselves and they're not doing any good for the person that they're caring for because they just don't have anything left to give. Um, so I always say to fill, filling up your cup is, um, I just can't find one of my colors here, just a second. What am I going to do next? I'll see if I can find that one. Um, to fill up your cup, I think, is, is twofold. It's, first of all, helping yourself and making sure you're healthy for yourself. But also, it allows you to be there as a caregiver. Um, so I always say to people, like, filling up your cup isn't selfish. Because it allows us to continue to do the things that we need to do for, to care for those around us. And um, it, it's... It's something that we need to do for ourselves to take that time to fill our cups up, um, but also to, to to make sure that we continue to love and care for the people that need us in our lives. Um, if we fill up our cups, we have more to give. So, you know, I think that is so important to recognize when your cup is running low, um, when you need to fill up, um, to do that. And to find healthy ways to fill up your cup again and, and so that you can pour from it. Um, you know, like if that's taking a day off, having a hot bath, um, reading a good book, um, taking time for yourself, letting somebody, sh like finding somebody to share the load with, even if it's just temporary. Like, um, I've been there. I've been to the point where I have burnt myself out to the point where I'm not functioning anymore. And I've seen what it cost me. Um, it cost me friends. It cost me relationships with my family. Um, I still have a strained relationship with my brother over it. Um, and it, you know, it affects it affects everybody around me, and it also affected myself. So that's one thing that I'm always very careful to do is to make sure that I'm filling up my cup, like. If I need a break, I take it. And like learning not to feel guilty about doing that, about taking the time to keep care of yourself when you need to, but acknowledging it. And I think really for, especially as people that work as caregivers, it's hard to acknowledge like, hey, I need a break. Um, because sometimes you end up feeling, you feel that you might be seen as weak or incapable if you say that you, you need that break. And, um, you know, that's, it's sad that people feel that way, but I get it. I get what it's like to be afraid to reach out for that help when you need it. And um, that's one thing I always encourage the families at work to do is to look after themselves so that they can be there to continue to support the ones that need them. So, yeah, um, 
that would be my favorite quote. So you can't pour from an empty cup is definitely my motto. And you know, it's kind of part of the reason I took this week off was I knew I needed to fill up my cup and just some kind of, I've turned my phone off. I'm recharging this week so that when I go back to work next week that I can be there for my residents 100%, but also so that I can be there for my son. Um, you know, when I'm stressed out, he feels it. He, he knows, hey, mom's kind of grouchy lately. And, you know, um, that's not fair to him. So for, for him, I need to be able to, to take that time to recharge. So, um, yeah, anyway, well, you guys, this, ah, I am almost done with this painting. I want to get rid of it. I want to be done. I'm getting there. I've got like, maybe a third left <laughs> and I'm counting down the days till this one's done. I have my Disney custom to do next. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'm going to end my chat here, but what I think I'm going to do is do a time lapse and finish this little section for you. And uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for listening to me. Hope you enjoyed working along with me if that's what you're doing. Um, and yeah, so we'll finish up. I'm going to time lapse this little section here and uh, we'll chat with you guys soon. Have a great day.